Short-term rentals in the Hilton Head area are so popular and there's a lot of buzz about what's happening here in 2023 on Hilton Head Island regarding those guidelines for short-term rental properties. I'm Chip Collins with Collins Group Realty and let's get after it. Okay, I'm here with Chris Sanders, who's our strategic advisor at Collins Group Realty. Chris, and it's a new year, and we've got new guidelines, right, that are happening yep. here in Hilton Head. In fact, we're out in front of one of our clients' beautiful oceanfront rental properties down at 8 Gadwall in Seapine, South Beach. Beautiful. So glad they allowed us to, to shoot this video for you. And what we're talking about today is the town of Hilton Head's short-term rental guidelines. And here's the thing about short-term rentals, and a lot of you know this, wonderful thing about Hilton Head Island is that you can own a beautiful property like this, enjoy it when you want to, and then rent it when you're not enjoying it to get rental income, to help defray carrying costs and to enjoy that as an investment property. And that's become very, very popular over the years. Of course, we know it's been around for decades, but it seems like it's increased. And as it increased, people have been buying property, putting it on the short-term rental market, and we've seen that those properties have started to populate areas that maybe didn't have short-term rental properties before. Maybe they weren't seen as the typical short-term rental property zone. And I think what's happened, Chris, and we've kind of, we kind of get, get this insight, is that people were sort of complaining about, hey, I'm starting to see a lot of cars parked around a particular house, or, or I, I, there's loud noise at night, or, or maybe there's even trash that, you know, gosh, it seems like there's always bags of trash out there on a Saturday and that sort of thing, and they're sitting out there. I think this kind of integration of short-term rental properties into primary residential areas has prompted the town to come up with a, a new plan, a new guideline about how to handle short-term rental properties. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So, so Chris, let's kind of roll out what the, what the new short-term rental plan is here in 2023. Well, it just, it just came into effect this week. I mean, just a few days ago. And basically the town, it's, it's a common sense approach to handling something that has already been happening here on Hilton Head for, for many, many years. And, and so basically the town of Hilton Head, they just want to identify the properties. Right. Um, they've made it real easy to do so. And then they, they have a, a couple things they just want to make sure happen. They want to make sure that short-term rentals, that folks have a place to park. Right, they don't right. just park and scatter everywhere. So they need identified and, and approved places to park. And, and where they're going to put their trash. Right. Uh, that's another thing that's really important. Those, those things, the town's going to want to know that on a site-by-site -site basis. And, um, and then the town also wants uh, a rental property to have somebody available. They want to have somebody available to, uh, to handle a situation mm -hmm. if they get a complaint that comes in or right. a call that comes in from a neighbor or something like that. And that's, that's been, uh, I think, a real good improvement. I saw that, that they basically one of the guidelines is that you have to be able to be, as a property manager or owner of a short-term rental property, I think you've got to be able to be on site to respond to a complaint maybe within one hour. You need to be able to, to respond to it, not okay. necessarily on site, okay. but you need to be able to respond to it within an hour. So, so more accountability, so yes, these sir. complaints just don't fall into the abyss, right? right? And, and so the other thing is there's a little bit of uh, cost associated with this now. So what's the town what's the town imposing in that regard? Well, we've always had to have business license if you run a business on mm -hmm. Hilton Head. That's nothing new. But the cost is, is really nominal. Um, right. it's, it's really, it's not that much. I think the permit itself is $250 in 2023. And then, um, and then your business license. So right. your business license will be based off the gross income that you receive that year. Okay, so gross rental, gross rental income, right? So yes. Let, so let's take a property that... Let's say a gross rental income is fifty thousand okay. dollars. What's the order of magnitude in terms of that short-term rental business permit? What's that roundabout going to cost somebody? Roundabout, if you if if you had gross fifty thousand dollars, you're you're only looking at about one hundred and seventy-four dollars a year okay. for a business license. So it's not anything major that's going to come into play. Right, so you got the two fifty plus maybe the one seventy-four on that particular example. Yes, sir. Ballpark. And, and then the other thing is, I noticed, and we've got this sample, that the town's put together this thing called Be a Good Neighbor, and it's a flyer that they want the owners to post in the short-term rental property to mm -hmm. communicate to the occupants about the importance of being a good neighbor, right? right. Like, keep, keep the noise down. There's a noise ordinance. So, so I think from 7 a.m. To, to 10 uh, p.m. is sort mm -hmm. of the, the open period, and then after that, it's pretty well locked down. And then the, or, the, the nose, uh, uh, noise ordinance is actually 24-7 anyway. Right. So, so they just wanted to communicate that about parking and that sort of thing. And I think your comment about it being a good common sense thing is yes. let, let's all kind of get along. I think that the challenge is that 
you had this influx and you had folks that were kind of used to things being a certain way. Now we got to kind of figure out how to get along. We got to include the rental companies, include the property owners, mm -hmm. include the renters, and make sure that we have a much better seamless rental season here right. in 2020. I think it's going to be a win for the town. I think it's a it's good proactive measure before anything got out of control. And I think I think it's reasonable. Yeah. And so for more information on this, we've put together a blog recently that um, is not just about what we've shared today, but also links. So if mm -hmm. you are a property owner and you're needing to get on top of this, you need a link to the plat design, you need a link to the, the permit application, you, you need a link to the business license. We've got all that on the blog as well. Um, you can print this flyer off uh, directly from the blog uh, as well. So we've got some good resources there that you're going to want to check out. And if you're considering or trying to figure out what's short-term rental income look like in terms of how does this look as, a, as an investment, what's the cash flow look like, We've put together and have had for quite a few years a short-term rental pro forma Excel spreadsheet that you can plug in all the numbers uh, relative to your purchase price and the amount you've put down and the gross rental income you might get and your management fees and now these fees associated with housekeeping costs, all that sort of stuff. You can plug it all in and you can kind of figure out, okay, what's the cash flow look like? Yep. So we've got some really good resources to tie in with what's happening here new in 2023 on Hilton Head Island. And as always, we appreciate your attention to this update.